Okay. Thinking yeah. of a swamp in terms of its ecological value is is fine for most people, but politicians want to know how does a swamp value us in terms of economics. So here's an economic, ecological comparison. In the swamp, you've got little TIC animals, amphipods, ostracods, copepods, little crustaceans, the plankton of the swamp, the plankton of the river, that are in turn, they're feeding on digested remains of plants, broken down plants. And in turn, the Daphnia and other planktonic animals are eaten by small fishes, mosquito fish, baby sunfish. Those in turn are eaten by larger sunfishes and others who are in turn eaten by still larger fishes. So in this food pyramid, thinking of a food pyramid divided into portions, in order to climb a rung in the food pyramid, you have to multiply the amount of energy required to climb that step by 10. So in this exercise, imagine a, a small fish, a mosquito fish. An individual mosquito fish weighs about a gram. If I had a handful of them, I'd have about a pound of mosquito fish in my cupped hands. One pound of mosquito fish, hundreds of animals, requires at least 10 pounds of little teinces to get to be that pound. Now, what eats the little mosquito fish? Another fish called a sunfish, which is, a, or brim, we call them. A one pound sunfish has to eat at least 10 pounds of mosquito fish equivalent in order to get to be one pound. You have to multiply the energy by 10. 10 pounds of mosquito fish had to eat at least 100 pounds of little teinces. Now, what eats a sunfish? A largemouth bass, a game fish. It's a big freshwater fish, predator, that eats smaller fishes. A one pound bass had to eat at least 10 pounds of sunfish equivalent, which had to eat at least 100 pounds of mosquito fish equivalent, which had to eat at least 1,000 pounds of little teinces. A one pound bass isn't anything to brag about. A 10 pound bass had to eat at least 100 pounds of sunfish equivalent, which had to eat at least 1,000 pounds of mosquito fish equivalent, which had to eat at least 10,000 pounds, five tons. The equivalent of a school bus in little teinces is required to produce one 10 pound bass. Amazing. <laughs> so where is the economics in this? Mm -hmm. The pursuit and capture of the largemouth bass is a $150 million industry in North Carolina alone. Wow. In Florida, it's $1.2 roughly billion dollars annually. In Texas, yes. $1.1, $1.2 billion. California, it's almost $2 billion. Just the pursuit and capture of the largemouth bass, which oddly enough, we don't keep, we throw them back because largemouth bass biomagnify mercury, methyl mercury, Good gosh. which coats the bodies of little teinces that get eaten by mosquito fish who concentrate methyl mercury in their fatty tissue. They get eaten by sunfish, which further magnify methyl mercury, who get eaten by bass further magnifying. So we have these people who are going out chasing largemouth bass in boats that cost upwards of $40,000 on $2,000 trailers hooked to a $30,000, $50,000 pickup truck. So they've got an $80,000 investment to chase, catch, and release largemouth bass. Because they release the bass, they don't have dinner, so they go to a restaurant. Because they've got an $80,000 fishing rig out in the parking lot, they're not sleeping on the ground. They're going to a hotel. All of those things add up to an economic engine fueled not by the bass. I argue it is fueled by the little teinces. Super species. That's amazing. Now listen, can I ask you a quick, a quick question? I hope I don't put you on the spot with this, but recent research has said that when you take away top predators, certain, if not all, ecosystems collapse. Depending on the top predator. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Only because of the ripple mm. effect. If you remove a top predator, the animal that that top predator feeds on no longer has 
a, a, an animal controlling, helping to control right. their numbers. And, and the operative word is helping control. There yeah. are many factors beyond an apex predator yeah. that, that regulates other species. Mm -hmm. The lion in the savanna is but one species that or, controls or, or, or coyote in the Rockies. Or coyote um, in the right. and, and, um, and then the deer run rampant and right. strip the bark off all the trees. And it, but it's not just the occurs. coyote, it's also... It, it could be wolves, it could be mountain lions, it could be yeah. cats that are mixed in. Mm -hmm. be, Who are all called all classified as top predators, aren't they? Correct. Yeah. So it's it's a suite of top predators controlling the guild of animals underneath them that are food for the top predators. The guild of animals. And, and the thing <laughs> that we have to keep in mind as human beings is we are at the top of every food pyramid on yeah. the planet, yeah. including the food pyramids at the deepest trenches in the deepest portions of the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean because, mm -hmm. I say this because, we send deep sea rovers down there and we bump into those shelves supporting tube worms and crabs and other animals and we knock them over. We, mm. we bump into them like pinballs. Or sonar. And, and we ping them with sonar. So, mm. so we're at the top of every food pyramid, certainly every trophic pyramid on land. We're at the top. So mm -hmm. what happens down below ripples up to us. Mm -hmm. We have the furthest to fall. That's why we have to maintain the integrity of the base, the pyramid underneath us. Right. Well, thank you for that. That was great.